Now I've reinserted the bubble cover uh, for the overhead guard right now. And one of the things that you'll notice is that they both have these little rollers on the front and back of the cover. So that as you're sliding your plywood through the machine, it simply can raise the cover up quite easily. Now, sometimes you'll have an operation that you don't want to have the cover in the way. Maybe you're changing a blade or you're doing an unusual size piece and you want to remove the cover. Maybe you've built a cabinet and the box is already assembled and the plans for your job change and you need to cut an inch off the cabinet when it's already built as a box. In that case, I like to take the entire cabinet assembly, put it up on my sliding table, but now this is in the way. For me to move this, there's simply a quick knob right here. This loosens. The entire assembly will loosen and swing out of the way. Now I can slide my entire box through the saw. I can flip it over and rotate it and put a nice cabinet through the saw. My guard is out of the way. When I'm done with this job and I want to return it to its position, it simply swings right back, hose and all. Goes back to its original position, the knob goes in, it locks in place, and I'm ready to go just like that. Now we mentioned this is a computerized panel saw or CNC controlled panel saw. And the very obvious part right here is this touch screen, this colored touch screen. And this allows me to control all the movements of the saw. This is part of it. This actually allows me to go through and enter my inputs, but they're all controlled down here through the electrical cabinet of the machine. To gain access to that, we have a small key and we'll unlock the cabinet. And once that's unlocked, we'll have a look inside here. And you can see just how nicely the electrical control panel is on this cabinet here. You'll see that it is a very neat and clean assembly here. All the controllers and all the switches and relays and so forth like that are all laid in here in a logical manner. They're also neatly wired and they're all labeled so that it makes maintenance on this machine a breeze. We have a few harnesses on the machine and we want to make sure that these are shock proof. Now to make sure that they're shock proof, you'll see that the one that is on the fence itself right here is actually done in this nice protective uh, piece right here. I call this a snake, but it actually folds out of the way and protects this harness as the table assembly moves back and forth. When the fence moves down the table, this simply covers the wire and keeps it protected. Now every harness on this machine comes into these control boxes with the use of these little aircraft connectors right here and they're a multi-pin connection, they're indexed, and then they also have this aluminum knurled nut on the outside here that allows those to be locked in. They're sealed against the weather, they're sealed against sawdust, and again, they're shot proof. This is a touch screen, and the touch screen allows you to go through and start and stop the saw and do all the operations and raise and lower the blade and tilt the blade and move the fence and figure out where your flip stop's gonna be, all from a touch screen. This is not a, a button like on your ATM, this is a touch screen just like you'd see on some very high-end machines. And you would want to go through and set these things by simply going through and knowing your parameters and setting these. Now there's a number of ways to do that. You can do it in a kind of a manual mode where you touch the, uh, the blade uh, button and you go plus or minus and it's going to move the blade up and down just while you hold the button. That's step number one. Number two is you can do a short-term memory where you go through and set memory for a few different cuts and go through and do those cuts and when you shut the machine off they're lost from memory. The other one you can do is what we call the hard memory. And these ones actually go into the memory bank of the machine and there's actually 300 locations for these jobs uh, in the machine. You can store up to 300 different cuts in there. Now this is the home screen that you'll see many times here and this tells you what the status of each of the components of the saw are. Right now it's telling me that the blade is at three inches high. I'm at zero degrees or what I call 90 degrees. Uh, and then my fence is set at 15 inches away. Now again, this can be read in inches or in millimeters. Right now I've got it set up in inches. For me to make adjustments, I can do it one of two ways. I can go through and hit the positive and negative next to each one here. And so if I want to take the blade down, I can simply hold this and this will move the blade down and you'll see that it counts up and tells me exactly where it's at. That's one way to do it. And I can do the same with the tilt or the fins. There's another way I can do it. If I want to set all three parameters at the same time, I can go through and hit the number. And let's say I want to set this at one inch. I'll set it at 1.0. I'll hit enter. I want to set the blade tilt, let's say I want to set it to 22.5 and I'll hit enter and the fence, let's say I want to have it at uh, 20 inches, I'll hit 20, hit enter. Now that I'm ready to go, I have all three values set in, I'll hit start, you'll see the fence moves, the blade is tilting at the same time. Now you've seen that the fence has moved, the blade is tilted, and the blade is lowered down. You'll hear that click, and that lets you know that the fence is locked in that position. Once the fence is done moving, 
it'll actually adjust itself for the blade tilt and lock in position. Now there's an automatic compensation for blade tilt and unlike a lot of the aftermarket units uh, on the market nowadays, this machine has an integral unit and it controls the saw blade uh, height, the tilt, and the fence and there's also compensation for the tilt of the, uh, of the blade on the fence. Now if I want to go back and reset those values again, we'll simply go back and reset those. Let's take our blade and we'll actually take this down to zero. We'll put this at zero. We're going to set the saw blade at 90 degrees, which is zero. And the fence, let's go ahead and bring the fence back in here. We'll put it at 10 inches. We'll hit start. The fence moves quickly and it slows down for the last little bit. You'll hear the saw blade. The saw blade has gone through and done the tilt and now it's dropping down. And that makes it very easy to go through and do all three adjustments. The nice thing you saw is I stood right here on this one side of the saw. All of the adjustments were made and I didn't have to run down here and crank the blade for tilt. I didn't have to run to the other side and do an adjustment for the blade height and I didn't have to run around and move my fence. That saves me a ton of time and so this machine may cost a little more than other saws but I make it back when I save my time in going through and doing all these cut operations. And as a business owner, the best way to make money is to save time. Now you'll see a number of keys along the bottom right here. This one that has the little computer screen. I'm going to touch that right now. This gives me my library and you'll see that I have three positions on the bottom here. This is page number one and I can have page number one. Page number two would be a whole new set of jobs. Page number three would be a whole new set of jobs. And this is where you put the titles for the job in here. And I've preloaded two into the machine already. I've got upper cabinet number one and base cabinet number one. And those might be a standard cabinet arrangement that I always do. I might have upper number two and base unit number two or any number of different types of jobs. I also may label one corner group number one and corner group number two for different types of cabinets that I always build. So let's go ahead and pick the upper cabinet selection right here. We'll go ahead and hit that and you'll see that these are the parameters or the list of cuts that I may use when I make an upper cabinet. Now I've got five different cuts that I can do on here and the first one I've selected is I've got the blade raising up up to 1.2. I've got the uh, blade angle set at zero which is at 90 degrees and I've got the fence set at 24 inches. So I'm going to cut this cabinet 24. My second cut that I'll move through and I'll just hit the button number two. It'll take me to my second cut. It gives me the same blade height, the same blade tilt. I don't want to move that. But it goes to 12 inches and it moves the fence into 12 inches. And, and that's going to be my width of the cabinet. I've got 24 tall. I've got 12 wide. I make that cut. My third cut I've got set at four inches and that's going to be my stringers in the cabinet or my tie bars. And I've got those set up for four inches and that might even be a toe kick for a cabinet. And I've got all of those cuts set up the way that I normally would cut a sheet and the way that I would have them on my cut list right here. I've got all five cuts lined up on this screen. Now I've programmed in three. You can program into a total of five uh, in your computer screen. You'll see that there's a lock and an unlock button on the bottom here. And you unlock each job to go through and use it. So I'll go ahead and unlock it. Hit job number one. Hit the OK button. It actually takes me in here preloads those values in the machine here and if I hit start it's going to move my fence, going to move my blade and it's setting me up for this first cut that we just had pre-programmed in the machine and it tells me up here upper cabinet number one, cut number one. And now that I've got it in position here I can simply hit start for my main blade and hit my scoring blade here and I'm ready to go. So I'll hit start and I'm ready to cut. Let's go back to the home page here for a moment and have a look at some of the other features. Now we've talked about all the manual entries we can put in here. Let's have a look at this one. This is our scoring blade. And as I mentioned earlier, the scoring blade is controlled through the touch screen. You don't have to worry about any knobs, none through the tabletop and none through the front of the saw. I don't have to walk around the saw. I simply touch this. This takes me to my scoring blade control and I can actually raise and then lower my scoring blade so I can bring it up above the table. Or if I'm cutting hardwoods, I can drop it down and leave it out of play and leave it off. I can also do my side to side adjustment. Uh, if it's off of a little bit one way or the other way, I can go through and hold this and you can see that it actually tells me exactly how far I'm moving it. And that reads out, you can see here, out to the thousandth of an inch because it's a very, very precise adjustment. And I can go back and I can zero right, that right in and just basically zero that out. So now I'm zeroed back out right where I started. I can exit this screen and then back to my home page.